And I'm going to go ahead and call us to order at 5.07 p.m. Eastern Time. And I did have one question. Is Mr. Mitchell here? I know he likes to make meetings. He's not required to, but our... I do not see him, but I will also message him. Okay. Yeah, I, would you like me to call the roll, Madam Chair? Yes, please. And I will share my screen as well. One moment. It's just really weird. What's it showing? Uh, I'm not going to share it right this second. Apparently, Zoom is having mm, issues. Okay. Um, Chair McArdle is here. Mr. Rutherford is absent. I am present. Mr. Redpath? Yes. Mr. Boast? I thought I saw him come in. Present. Thank you. Mr. Nikila is still absent. Um, Mr. Vincent? I'm here, allegedly. Okay, Mr. Watkins? Here. Ms. Yanaskavich? Here. Mr. Dar? Here. Mr. Dassing? Here. Mr. Ford? Here. Mr. Garcia? Here. Mr. Heyman? Present. Ms. Hayes? Present as well. Mr. McGee? Present. Did Mr. Nana come in? Okay. No. Okay, so he's absent. Mr. Bracco? Absent. Mr. Chatterton? Present. Mr. Hirsch? Here. Mr. Johnson? No. Here. Mr. Malagon? Present. Mr. Sean? Hold on. Guys, please mute. Okay, he's absent. Mr. Thompson? Okay, I believe he's absent. Mr. Weir just came in. Yep. And I'm I'm just trying to get the notable guests. I mean, you all are notable, but sorry. Um, Mr. I think I saw Mr. Dasbach, who's the Oliver Tomont ca campaign manager. Did we have any staff? I don't believe so. And though not for the minutes, um, I do. Staff do of you, Oliver. I meant staff of the National Party. I did, yeah. do, do know, um, just as distinguished, um, Dr. Rechtenwald has joined us. Um, and Madam Chair, I believe that's it. I'm going to try to share my screen again. I'm here as campaign court and treasurer of Rectowalt's campaign, just saying. Sorry. Okay. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Price. Is it showing the correct? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. At this time, we're going to go ahead and do public comment. So the way to do that is to go down to the bottom and click raise hand or click reactions and raise hand. And I will get to see whose hands are raised. Beautiful, thank you. You get up to two minutes, please um, time yourselves. Uh, that's super helpful so then I don't have to interrupt you. Um, and Mr. Watkins, if you wouldn't mind keeping time also. Here. All Madam, right. Madam Chair? Yes. If you could please, uh, well, I suppose I'm doing it. Uh, remind, please stay your state because I don't know everybody's state. Yes, and I um, I know quite a few of them, so I generally will call those out as well. Okay, up first we have uh, Sam Bowler, uh, Alabama Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, it's it's it, anyone can do the right thing when it's easy. Um, it takes real integrity to be able to do the right thing when it's excruciatingly painful and difficult. And I would just like to commend our secretary, Karen Ann Harlos, for being a person of integrity and really embodying being a member of the party of principle. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Mr. George Phillies. Uh, Madam Chair, assuming you can hear me, hello? 
I am unmuted. It thinks. I can, can hear, hear you, Mr. Phillies. I hear you. Oh, good. In that case, three cheers to our secretary for her 22-page appeal to the Libertarian Party of Colorado Judicial Committee. Good work, Karen Ann. Uh, second, I urge the LNC to fund the remainder of the uh, New Hampshire ballot drive, uh, which is well underway, uh, lest I be accused of being all hat and no cattle. In addition to being a maximum donor to the Oliver campaign, I donated $4,000 directly to the New Hampshire ballot drive, and I urge you to complete the drive. Thank you, Mr. Philly. Up next, we have Michael Kelly. What state are you from, Mr. Kelly? Yes, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Kelly from Kansas uh, at Nine Stripe Vet on X. Uh, I want to say the best thing that the Libertarian Party can do is add RFK Jr. to the ticket and remove Chase. Even Dr. Rectenwald acknowledged. You cut out. I'll just kind of that in a post uh, today or yesterday. Joe Jorgensen raised $5 million. Uh, during her campaign, Chase will not break the thousands. RFK Jr. signed a pledge with the Libertarian Party Colorado, putting our best libertarian, par libertarian ideas at the forefront of the campaign. This week, RFK Jr. polled at 19% nationally in what is basically a three-way race. Chase will not get 1%. And for states like mine in Kansas, we're going to lose ballot access here. I cannot support several of his globalist-type positions and his disdain for veterans like myself. Thank you very much. Madam Chair, I did not catch the name of the last speaker, nor the state. Michael Kelly. What state were you from again, Mr. Kelly? Kansas. Thank you. Thank so. you. Up next, we have Mr. T.J. Cosin from Pennsylvania. Hi, uh, Madam Chair. I just wanted to thank the Madam Secretary for her appeal to the LP Colorado and following our bylaws, as she has continually shown to be able to do. Um, I also would like to acknowledge that if we're talking about globalists, um, RFK Jr. is a gun grabber. When he ran as a Democrat, he was not opposed to taking all our AR-15s and all our guns as long as it was a bipartisan bill. The only thing that is libertarian about RFK Jr. is his stance on COVID-19. And by the way, if the COVID-19 vaccine was properly vetted, he would have been okay with a mandate. He's publicly stated that before 2023, before violating, uh, wiping out his Twitter. That we are not, we are the party of principle, not the party of selling out for votes. LP Colorado is in breach of the fiduciary duty with the LNC, and as such, should be disaffiliated. In my personal opinion, not an opinion of the campaign. I also, if we're also going to talk about globalist globalism. Maybe not taking money from AIPAC would be a start for RFK to agree from to, but he won't because he likes taking money, globalist money. And maybe not agreeing to support bombing kids in Hamas in, in Palestine, that would be kind of a good thing too. So if we're talking about globalists, there is a globalist that uh, some libertarians are supporting, and that is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kozen. Up next, we have Ian Winarski. Um, Win Winarski, yep. Uh, what state are you from? I'm from Virginia. Thank you very much. Please go ahead. Thanks for having me on, Madam Chair. So my thought process on the situation regarding Colorado is that a lot of libertarians right now are afraid, afraid of losing ballot access, afraid of the fact that we're headed towards a low performing fourth place finish this year. We could potentially lose our perennial status as the bronze medalists in the popular votes. And we don't really have a defined mission in this election. We have our ideology and we're steadfast in that, but we need to develop more comprehensive functional goals if we want to succeed in the years to come. And my concern is that not only do we not have those goals, but the only thing we're doing right now is headed towards losing almost all of our ballot access and kowtowing to the whims of Donald Trump and people within the duopoly and not within our third party network. All the commentary I see with people saying, oh, he's going to free Ross. Oh, he's going to give us cabinet position. Those are great things but he is still a part of the duopoly and we cannot kowtow to his whims 
we need to do is define our status as a as a third party, as an enemy of the duopoly. We need to support our local candidates, our state candidates. We have a lot of great candidates for U.S. Senate and the House of Representatives. We have in Iowa, Montana, New Jersey, all, all sorts of candidates. That is where our resources should be going. And we need to define our goal this year of putting as much energy as possible into congressional and state races. Then and only then that was can... Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Up next, we have Mr. Bill Huffstutter. Thank you, what? Madam Chair. Uh, this is Bill Huffstutter from Colorado. Thank you. So I am uh, planning on attending the uh, board meeting tomorrow night. Um, hopefully, I, I have a resolution that I am going to bring to the board. Hopefully, we can bring them back in as libertarians. But uh, I am effectively going to pass a resolution that it's either a resignation and a disbandment of the affiliate of Colorado for now until we can get a, a new uh, libertarian board or uh, they can get on board with us and support the libertarian cause. Um, my, my whole view on this is that even though Chase may not win the presidency, we need to support libertarians all across. The more we support libertarians all across, the more libertarians are going to get voted in, the stronger our ballot access is going to be, and eventually libertarians are going to be a third party killing the duopoly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to jump over LNC members. Please don't take offense and go to non-LNC members, and then we'll come back to you. Um, up next, we have Ms. Joanne Vaccarino. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, can you share what state you're from, please? I'm from Florida. Um, I just wanted to, I served on the core Gary Johnson team. Um, and when we failed to get into debates in 2016, I had really hoped the LP would stop wasting money and energy on presidential races and focus locally. Um, that said, I look at this party today and it has strayed so far from the part, party that I joined in 1988. It looks like it has a left and a right. And I will be honest, I have walked away. I didn't even pay my membership dues this year because I was so upset with everything that's happened in the party. I want to come back. I really do. But Chase Oliver appears to be a candidate that cannot unite the party. And in that case, ballot access for the LP is at stake, as well as the donations and membership money and, and everything else. Um, I agree with Colorado. Kennedy can help the LP maintain ballot access, get ballot access, get the status that it needs as a third party. Um, he is libertarian. He signed the pledge. I, I don't, you know, I don't understand why there's so much resistance to him. He stood for liberty in 2020 when libertarians did not. Um, you know, I was I was posting on my pages and getting attacked by libertarians when I stood against lockdowns. Kennedy stood against lockdowns earlier than the party did. So, and it, you know, not just that one thing, he's got plenty of, of libertarian, enough libertarian ideas that he can get into the public to help us. Um, so I agree with Colorado doing what they did. And I know uh, that's, that maybe that's not popular, but the, the party, it's just, it, it's making me want to cry looking at this party. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Hector Roos from Florida. We have 30 seconds left on this item. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I wanted to uh, uh, raise the point that I was um, I initially had w was researching the outcome of the of the convention. I, and I wanted to uh, be ask the, this, uh, this committee for for basically review of what happened. Um, I was part of the Florida State uh, Florida affiliate that asked the LNC for a review uh, out of concern that we have these extended uh, credentials fights every year, every convention. And it's a good sign uh, that there's a lot of attention for a party, there's a lot of interest. Uh, but frankly, it, it, we also know that right now our bylaws are not, be, are not meeting our needs for the party and they have to be changed. My, my Sorry to interrupt, that is time. Okay, I'm gonna move to extend time by six minutes and that will make it so that each person remaining can speak for one minute. And I will not be adding anyone after Jacob Luria. Second. Okay, any objection to extending time by six minutes only? Going once, going twice. Okay, Mr. Roos, you're extended. You have one minute. Thank you. Let me just finish. I'll finish my statement by saying uh, uh, that the rules of uh, the rules of have to be 
even for everybody in this party. We participate. We put a lot of time and investment into our national conventions. Uh, donors ask for some for, for transparency and for honest elections. And this LNC has to uh, has to protect our donors, our members, and our delegates who who enter into this process. Uh, and I hope that that is something that this LNC is willing to do today. Uh, I think we just need a, a, a clean uh, a clean start. But if that if this party decides that it, it needs to continue with what we're doing, I'm supporting what Florida is doing. Uh, I'm I'm supporting whatever the decision of this LNC is. And ultimately, we need to we need to move move past this, even if it's a the, the biggest disaster of of this year that has been predicted. But we have to do it together. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, and if uh, if I think um, and if uh, I stand with Dr. Rechtenwald, if he wants to um, uh, replace the nominee or if he wants to do something, because I think this That's process needs to be thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Roos. Up next, we have Nathan Romig. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my name is Nathan Romig, and I am from Pennsylvania, and I would like to um, support Colorado and their decision. I think that uh, each state has a difficult decision to make, and for Colorado, they've made a decision that is right for them, and I support the state affiliates in their ability to make the right decision for themselves <clears throat> in in the case of supporting in this in the case of supporting kennedy i think that this is a very based move in in supporting his candidacy and continuing to move the needle more toward liberty and what what they've accomplished is is that great is already and i think they have a lot more to potentially accomplish soon thank, thank you. you thank you very much up next we have lori price lori uh could you please state uh tell us what state you're from sure thank you madam chair i'm lori price i'm from connecticut um i know i don't have much time so i'll be brief um i support the removal of chase oliver and mike termott from the um nomination ticket uh it's not personal um, I'd like to see Michael Rechtenwald be nominated instead. Reasons, uh, briefly, at the convention, non-delegates had their hands raised and were able to participate in voice votes, and there was a lot of chaos and that delayed uh, participation by potential delegates for Michael Rechtenwald, who won the first five rounds on Sunday. Uh, therefore, there was some chaos there. Um, and if this takes place, I, I think money will flow back into the Libertarian Party. And one other thing, um, Michael Rechtenwald uh, has always embodied small L Libertarian and large L Libertarian principles by speaking out against the Great Reset and lockdowns, which make no mistake, that is coming time. back. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Price. Um, up next, we have Blake Huber. We have Jacob Luria. And then our last person is actually going to be Mr. Ford. It's good afternoon. Blake Huber from Colorado. I've been a member of the Libertarian Party since the early 80s, former state chair of the Kansas Party, former member of the LNC. I joined the party of principle, not the party of personality. The National Committee, I'm sorry, the National Convention set the candidates. If you didn't like the candidates, you should have voted at the National Convention a different way or campaigned for your person. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Up next, we have Mr. Jacob Luria. Hi, Madam Chair. Jacob Luria, Colorado. Um, I know I only have a quick minute, so I've kind of been trying to figure out what I want to say. I think I just want to say this. I got involved in the Libertarian Party during COVID, not because, I mean, yes, the Mises Caucus made it easier, but not for any particular group just for liberty since then and even in making this decision i haven't actually heard anyone offer a viable solution to colorado or any alternative support all i ever see is bullying lawsuits doing all of this kind of stuff and i know people are going to do that people want principle all of that kind of stuff um but i i mean like people like me do come in and try and work really hard and try and accomplish things we're not trying to stab the party in the back but like where every other libertarian has not been willing to come to the table and has just threatened us, you know, I, I mean, not not physically, but generally with contentious comments, the Kennedy campaign has 
reached out. There are a lot of libertarians who have donated to our party recently because of it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, lastly, we have uh, Mr. Ford. Well, Madam Chair, I'm just putting out a call to request for something very practical. There are three states in the Northeast where we need petitioning volunteers. We need help in southern New Hampshire. We need help in Rhode Island. And we need help in New Jersey. So I'll be posting my cell phone number there. I'm the regional representative for those states. And we simply need boots on the ground. And if, in fact, you support the candidacy of, uh, as we all show that, the candidacy of uh, Mr. Uh, Chase and, and, and Mr. Kamat, then it's time to take to the streets and let's get the candidates on the ballot. We need volunteers. We need to re-inject the volunteer gene into the libertarian movement. So anyone who can help, please reach out to me. Thank you. Madam Chair, I'm moving to extend time to allow for two minutes to allow Mr. Pratt and myself to speak. Okay. Any objection to extending time by two minutes? I'll second that. Okay. Hearing none, time is extended by two minutes. Um, go ahead, Mr. Pratt. Uh, thank you very much for letting me speak. Um, from my read of the bylaws uh, and the papers I've seen, I think the wonks have it, but I think that there's a real uh, danger in that. Um, I think that in over the last 50 years, we've shown and uh, that we just don't know how to achieve liberty. I've been really encouraged by the innovation that, that we've seen. Uh, over the last few years. I'm excited by some of the potential, and I hope that we can find a way that affiliates like uh, LP Col Colorado can innovate, um, and we can actually see uh, some alternative paths towards possibly increasing liberty uh, in the United States. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pratt. Um, up next, we have our secretary. I am not speaking in my position as LNC secretary, but as Colorado member, I'd like to make that clear. It alarmed me to hear an all Colorado board member go principles or whatever. We are the party of principles. We are not to whore out our votes. The Colorado bylaws are clear. Libertarians honor contracts. Otherwise, we are nothing. As David Nolan said, if the statement of principles is uncomfortable for you to use as a standard, then perhaps you should find a party that suits you better. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Madam Secretary. That concludes our public comment. Um, we are going to stand at ease for uh, up to two minutes while our secretary checks. I've had a lot of people say that they are waiting to be let in. I want to remind everybody who's listening on YouTube to please register in advance. Um, I know it takes um, a little bit of discipline to remember to do that. And we have a lot of things going on throughout the week, but that would be super helpful. I am letting it will take me one moment. I did have to unshare my screen because it shows people's private email addresses. Which Oh, I yeah. Know. Well, that's that's totally fine. And it does look like Mr. Thompson is in that list, so he may be coming in. Okay, they're all approved. I will reshare my screen. Beautiful. Thank you very much. All right. Um, up next, the next item on our agenda is Convention Oversight Committee update. And that is agendized by me. Um, I'm going to share a brief update and also um, open it up for questioning. And there's probably going to be some questions that I can't answer. There's going to be some questions that Ms. Yana Scavage can help me answer. So right now we are waiting to get our hotel bill adjusted. There were some charges that were higher than what we had agreed to. And we're waiting to get some reimbursements um, from various parties, but before we get those reimbursements, we need to get the, the bill adjusted because those parties are specifically the candidates. Um, they all need an Guys, please mute. Hey, guys, mute yourself. Thank you. Uh, those parties are um, owed an adjustment as well. 
uh, our treasurer posted the May financials today and none of those numbers have been adjusted. So I hope that gives a little bit of clarity, although I know it's it's not particularly clear. Ms. Yanniscavich, do you have any additional comments? Yes, I could also say that um, while um, in, in the May um, financial report, the hotel bill was accrued to, to May, which um, is appropriate. We were kind of waiting to, to get the accurate number first um, and then to also have the appropriate um, you know, um, revenue that we expect to come in from those parties. Um, but other convention expenses have been paid in June and July. So, and they were not accrued initially to May. So the only expense just to be clear that was accrued to May was the, um, hotel bill. We've paid, um, all of the other bills in June and July. All right. I assume LNC members are going to have some questions for us. Uh, Ms. Meredith Hayes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just wondering, um, what do we have an enforcement mechanism in place to recover funds from those who, to whom or from whom we are owed reimbursement? I have concerns about one particular candidate who I believe owes us a significant amount, and I'm hoping we have a contract with him or something to that effect. Thank you. Um, yeah, but I don't think we're at that place yet. I mean, we need to get their bills adjusted down as well. And I, I don't think that anybody's, you know, being a bad actor. We just need a little bit of, well, quite frankly, help from a couple of individuals on getting the final numbers in. So, Understood. I just wanted to ensure yeah. that we had some sort of uh, way yeah. to recover. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Questions from anyone else? And yeah, Kathy and I are trying to wrap this up with staff um, Monday and Tuesday. We're just not quite there yet. Questions, questions, nothing? All right, well, if there's nothing, we can just jump to the next um, agenda item, which is ballot access committee update by Mr. Nana. Mr. Nana is not present. Well, we can ask Mr. Redpath. Yes, Madam Chair, thank you very much. Uh, at this time, uh, I would say that we have, let me count them up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11 states still <clears throat> that we have uh, signatures to gather or things to do to get on the ballot. Uh, I am presuming that we are passing on the District of Columbia. That would be about 5,200 uh, valid signatures in a very difficult petitioning environment. Uh, it has been the LNC plan, uh, I think, all along this year to not uh, spend money on a DC uh, petition drive. Um, <clears throat> I would say that uh, Alabama, I will report on the Libertarian Party of Alabama petition drive. Uh, I think Alabama has now met the uh, criteria for $5,000 to be um, contributed by the Libertarian National Committee. Uh, Jonathan McGee, the executive director of the uh, Libertarian uh, Party of Alabama, has informed me that they have $8,000 to put toward this. Uh, he told me, made a very generous contribution, uh, that uh, he would put in $5,000 uh, into the petition drive if $5,000 were raised elsewhere. I called Richard Winger. Uh, Richard Winger and I are both putting in $3,500 into the Alabama petition drive each, which will get Alabama to the $20,000 that would trigger the $5,000 uh, encumbrance from the Libertarian National Committee. I have a contract. Uh, I have made a informal agreement that is going to be reduced to writing with the Libertarian Party of Alabama or uh, the... Um, campaign, the presidential campaign, to get started with Trent Poole's organization to gather signatures there. Uh, we have uh, six weeks from this coming Friday to uh, to uh, 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 
finish this petition drive and and uh mr pool uh, has the manpower there uh to get this done or nearly get it done uh in the in the near term uh so there have been great strides in terms of the alabama petition drive um the Kentucky petition drive is underway. Uh, there, of course, there is an encumbrance from the LNC. Andy Powell is there. Petition, excuse me, not Andy, pa Andy Jacobs, excuse me. Andy Jacobs is there petitioning right now uh, in Kentucky. Uh, Dustin Nana has been down there. Bob Lynch is uh, going to go over from Virginia very soon, is my understanding, if he's not already there. So the Kentucky drive is getting underway. With respect to Minnesota, I've been in touch with Chip Tangen, uh, or Tangen, however you correctly pronounce his name. He says there are 400 signatures in Minnesota. He anticipates that it will be done 2,000 valid signatures entirely on a volunteer basis, according to Chip. The New Hampshire drive is uh, a long way uh, along. I believe they are done with CD1, CD2, Mr. Ford just spoke to. That's the southern part of the state, is my understanding. Uh, they're not done there, but they are moving ahead uh, with, uh, with CD2. So the New Hampshire drive overall is in pretty good shape. The New Jersey drive right now, 200 signatures they have. Uh, that have been collected by volunteers. They need 800 net signatures. Uh, they're going to shoot for at least 1,200 gross signatures. Uh, they are raising money in New Jersey right now, and the presidential campaign is raising money in New Jersey. Uh, so um, that drive, you know, I've, I've been on the phone. The deadline is three weeks from tomorrow, July 29. So I've said, you know, I've encouraged them. We got to get going here. Got to get going. Uh, they have they have a vendor who's going to get the paid signatures. I do not know who this person is. I've asked uh, for the vendor. I've asked to speak to the vendor, uh, and uh, but I don't know who it is yet. But I will be speaking with the vendor there because that that uh, again, uh, not a lot of signatures, but the deadline's only three weeks weeks away. Pennsylvania is at 4,459 signatures. It's 4,400 XX. It's uh, uh, 4,400 and change signatures. They've got to get about 3,000 more signatures in three and a half weeks. I've been in touch with people in Pennsylvania. I'm going to be in touch with more people in Pennsylvania to push that forward. Uh, I believe some money is being raised for the Pennsylvania drive as well. Um, good volunteer effort so far, but we've really got to kick it into a higher gear over the next three weeks uh, with the August 1 deadline. 3,000 more gross SIGs to go there. Rhode Island is only 1,000 net SIGs with a fortunately late deadline of September 6. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Ford is addressing that situation in Rhode Island. Uh, we expect that to be done on a totally volunteer basis. Tennessee, I haven't been in, I've been in touch with some people in Tennessee. It's only 275 SIGs. I don't know exactly where that stands right now, but it's just 275. Uh, the deadline is sometime in August, but I will be addressing that situation. Virginia's over 6,000 gross signatures. We need 5,000 net. There is still some cleanup in some of the congressional districts because it's 5,000 net SIGs, uh, but 200 at least from each of the 11 congressional districts. I am in frequent contact with Jennifer Leatherberry there. Uh, Washington, I was, I've was i been told, is 1,115 gross signatures. We need 1,000 net. I'm in touch with uh, Layla Bush on a regular basis regarding Washington and Massachusetts. I'm not sure what the situation is, but it is uh, it is my understanding uh, the uh, chair has been in contact with some people in Massachusetts, but beyond that, I can't really uh, give you much of an update at this time. And those are the states uh, where we are uh, we still need to do work um, and, uh, moving forward over the next, uh, the, again, the final, the final, most of the deadlines are in August. The last deadlines are Kentucky and Rhode Island on Friday, September 6. Thank you, Mr. Redpath. I hope to have an update on Massachusetts in the next couple of days. Illinois concluded their signature gathering and that's a little bit of a tenuous situation and we should have an update on illinois um monday uh that looks promising so so that's what i've got and i believe we have a question from ms yanaskavich yes mr redpath are we expecting any more um bills from virginia on ballot access 
No, I don't think so. I'm, I, I don't think there'll be anything more coming from Virginia. I mean, they, okay. they, they, oh, it was only 7,000 and change that they asked for out of a 25,000 encumbrance. The paid signatures for now have been ended in Virginia, and it is their plan to finish the rest volunteer. Okay, thank you. I'm also going to um, say that later when we move to go into executive session to discuss um, reconciliation committee updates, that we're also going to discuss a little bit of political strategy in Alabama regarding signature gathering. And uh, no, that does not mean we're interested in pulling back our 5K donation, because I'm not. Um, and then also a little bit of political strategy in uh, New Hampshire. So just put a little pin in that. Any other questions on ballot access? Going once, going twice, going through the agenda quickly. All right, if there's nothing, then we're gonna jump to the next agenda item, which is subcommittee oversight, it was agendized by Mr. Nikayla. Is he here? He is. I assume he. Oh, um, Ashley, could you please mute? Um, I, Mr. Nikila. Yes, I apologize. I'm here. Um, I had an issue getting on my phone. I apologize. Okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, so subcommittee oversight. Um, uh, yeah. So real quick, um, I did just want to talk about a strategy going forward as we start to staff our committees for the year. And, you know, one of the issues we've always run into with our committees is lack of oversight by the LNC. Um, I don't, you know, blame the board for it necessarily. It's just, it is what it is. Um, we've just had committees in the past, some are functioning and you've got good people, some aren't functioning and, you know, they, there's, there's certain issues that need to be addressed, whether the committee chair just isn't getting meetings together, whether hey, look, whether, uh, we get turnover on the committee, et cetera. Um, so those types of problems, you know, it seems to be something we've always dealt with as a board for as long ago as I could as I remember. And uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. So one of the things we did in LP Florida back in the day is, and I'm not sure if we still do it, but when we did, it was very, it was very successful where we actually kept tabs on things. Do I need to is, oh, one second. Oh, guys, hey. guys, guys. Trump sticker or Biden sticker. All right. Or nice. Sounds I like a, uh, one I of those guys. <laughs> that was a fast talker. Uh, so, yeah, one of the things we did is we just had a monthly chairs call. And if Matt Johnson's on the call, Matt, I'd love your honest opinion of, you know, how that went. Because I remember your committee chair back in the day and, you know, we had, we had you know, the different committees on and basically I we just got on the call. Circle. All right. Yeah, Matt, what did, what did you think about those committee chair so calls I, we had back I can back tell in you, the day? I can tell you I am still also a committee chair and we still do those calls. Good. Uh, and they're kind of they're kind of great because it gives um, each committee gets with each other. So, for example, fundraising committee can get with the communications committee, and we can kind of hash out plans and details and how we can work together um, to get missions, you know, the goals accomplished. But it also allows the EC to also stay involved, and it kind of helps keep the feet. To the, the, the feet to the fire of the committees and the committee chairs. So uh, I like that idea. And and one of the great things about it is, you know, it, it kind of gets the committees when they see one committee doing really well, they don't want to be the lame duck that isn't doing really well too. So there's a bit of a sense of friendly competition, but moreover, I think a sense of working together and kind of showing off, Hey, this is what we're up to. And, you know, it'd, it'd be an opportunity to say, Hey, when's the last time you guys have met? Cool. Uh, Tuesday that, Seven o'clock. We oh, you haven't met because you haven't had quorum. Do we need to run this by the board and you know get you guys some new people because so and so hasn't showed up for six months? All right, cool. Let's get you a new, you know, some new committee members. Get that turnover out of there. Get some new people that want to do the work. So, um, 
so uh, it, it's something that worked really well for, for still to this day for many years. Um, as Matt said, it helps people to work together. You know, you have that cross communication. If, you know, convention committees plan convention does, you know, social media or whomever, whatever committee, you know, affiliate support committee, like how can we work together, support each other? So what we did on the LPF side is we just had a monthly meeting. You know, it could be, we did it on Sundays because we always had a meeting every Sunday. Um, but it could be like a couple hours before our, our regular LNC meetings. It could be on a random Sunday that we just pick a date. And the idea would be that LNC members that want to be there, you know, go in there. And I was thinking how we may want to do it if we're interested in it. You know, we've got five at-large members that could, you know, run the meeting once a month. Hey, you got February, I'll take March, you know, I'll be on the call. If you just want to run it, be kind of the, you know, be the the coordinator that just goes around the room. But honestly, with these these calls, what you know, if, if they just went off, they you let them go. You know, you wouldn't you wouldn't sit there and direct traffic because there's it was really an open session. You would just make sure you got around to everybody. So, um, and then people would come up with ideas, and you know, it was really a great environment just to communicate and touch base, and and have obviously board members that want to be there show up and just you know listen in and talk and you know see what's going on. So. So I wanted to broach that, you know, for the board and see if it's something we'd be interested in. We could figure out, you know, who wants to take what month or if it's, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter, you know, how we do it, who, who's, you know, running the, the, the room as long as we get everybody in there and, and we, uh, we just see what's going on with all of our committees and, and how we can support them as a board. And, you know, things can go back to the board if, if, you know, at least we know what's going on. We can help them and reassign or do whatever we need to to keep tabs on them. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, um, you know, let me know and and hopefully we can we can put something together after we populate our committees and pick a random date and have meetings if you know just a little roundtable type of thing. <clears throat> so that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments on that, um, I have my hand raised, Madam Chair. Sure, go right ahead. <laughs> Um, Mr. Nikayla, um, I actually think this is a wonderful idea. I didn't mean to say that. Like, I was surprised <laughs> that you had a good idea. I'm sorry. Um, one thing I really liked about it is that it it delegates a specific responsibility to the at larges. Mm -hmm. A lot of time, a complaint I hear <laughs> is that <laughs> everyone else has a specific role, and it's not that I think our at larges are lazy or anything like that. It's just I think that is good. I I would invite you to submit a policy manual proposal. Um, because particularly with there being an appetite, not saying it's going to happen, but there has been people on the LNC who want to move to twice a year meetings, but we've already went from four to three in past terms way before, you know, this last term or this one and committee reports are only due at regular meetings. And if we went down to two, you're talking about committees only reporting twice a year that that's not nearly enough. So, I'm really intrigued by your idea and would welcome a policy to see a policy manual proposal on it. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll get with you um, offline and uh, maybe get your help to write something out there. We can submit for the next meeting, but yeah, to your point, you know, the at large has always been a choose your own adventure game as far as, you know, what do we do is at large. And quite frankly, I had more work as a region two rep because I had to travel and do certain things. So at least this gives us some accountability and something to, to work on. Um, yeah, I, I like it. I think that's a great idea. I think a policy manual amendment would be something, you know, we could figure out the details, but yeah, that sounds great. Anybody else? All right. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Nikaela. If there are no further questions on that agenda, item. actually, Madam yes. Chair, I, I do have one quick question, if I may. Yes. Uh, so, Mr. Nikaela, are you proposing that at larges pick their own committees, or how would that? How do you envision that working? So, I'm thinking that um, what we would do is basically, you know, we can just instead of it being, you know, one person every month, we can just kind of pass it back and forth. So, one month it could be me, one month it could be, you know, you or whoever, you know, whatever. So, we kind of pass it amongst the at larges, but we hopefully all be there like we'd all attend um but i am not in that person. large i will remind you that's all you guys uh -oh. i was just curious <laughs> <laughs> i am a lowly alternate I don't you put that evil on me ricky Bobby. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, no, we just pass it around. I think, I think that'd be the best. So, you know, we just say, Hey, you know, who can take it this month? I'm out of town. All right. You know, you do it. But, but as long as we get, you know, you know, and obviously encourage the board to attend, you know, whoever can make it. And, uh, and yeah, just, you know, everybody would have a turn just to, to run the meeting. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Yep. Um, thank you guys so much. Um, we're going to move to our next agenda item, which is population of committees and application process agendized by Ms. Harless. Yeah, I, I think, Madam Chair, you were, there was a, I forgot the two committees that you said are, are going out shortly. I know I did work with staff on getting them. Affiliate and candidate support are going to go out. We are going to use uh, pretty much the same application process that we used last time, the questions. And, um, you know, I think we can probably select our committee members at our in-person meeting in August. And um, and there we're going to use uh, the new CRM to send out the application. And it's very similar. It's like a cross between job form and survey monkey. It was really easy to learn. Um, so we would also have, and it's not that we need to populate them right. Well, I think audit, we need to populate right away. Um, pr probably all of them, except for awards, which can go closer to convention. But, um, we also have the, the audit committee, uh, awards again, which it probably can wait and the, uh, information services committee. So I do have up on the screen if the LNC wish it and also the membership wishes to look at the requirements for LNC participation and non LNC participation. Uh, so it's up to you, Madam Chair, as to when we wish to solicit for these. But I think audit and I ask probably at the next meeting as well if you're amenable. Um. I'd like to get affiliate support and candidate support out this week. Staff and I are going to be at Freedom Fest, but I think that they can still get those out. And then the following committees, we can probably get those applications out the next week. Okay. Just wanted to give everyone a heads up on what they looked like in case they were interested in any of those committees. Awesome. Thank you very much. All right. Um, up. Uh, any other questions on this agenda item? Questions, questions, questions. If there's none, we're going to go to our next agenda item, which is a letter for a Yemen war powers resolution agendized by Mr. Watkins. The, uh, I don't think I'll need 15 minutes, um, but this was sent to us, a couple of us on the LNC. I didn't check all the recipients, but... Um, pretty lengthy letter but basically it um it's calling it, it wants people to um you know different organizations to sign on and it's basically just calling um for congress to pass a uh, war powers resolution related to yemen uh to cease hostilities there um and i did send it to the secretary today i meant to do it earlier but just with the holiday and everything else it was um just kind of hectic and it slipped my mind, but, and, and we don't have to vote on it today. If, if y'all don't want to, we can just kick it to email, but I would like to point out at least some organizations of no, uh, at least more related to us, um, that have already signed on. And, uh, those are antiwar.com, bring our troops home. Um, I think the libertarian, yep. The libertarian Institute has signed on, uh, green party of, Pennsylvania and a number of other uh, organizations. I think about 58 or so organizations have already signed on to this letter. Um, so that's really it for me, unless anybody else has already seen this, has anything to say. Um, but again, we don't have to vote on this at the moment. We can kick it to email. It's fine with me. Do we want to vote on it? Thoughts? Um, Madam Chair. Sure. I don't believe it's in order to vote on it because I, I, Mr. Watkins, I think maybe you sent it to the wrong email address or it got eaten. Um, I don't have it, but everyone hasn't seen it, okay. which is why I said on that thread I needed the actual letter for it to be valid notice. Yeah, uh, it looks like I sent it to Karen. Karen. Ann, I think 
that, yeah. that must have been a mistake. But I mean, that's fine. I, I don't mind. I can forward it to everybody so they can read it and we can just dispense with this right now and save time. Would you mind, yeah, putting it on the list during yes. the meeting and then I'll co-sponsor it. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay, any other questions on that agenda item? We are moving through quickly. All right, our next agenda item is agendized by Ms. Harlow's retrieval attempt of taken historical items. If you were at the national convention, please, please listen closely to this one. Okay, and I'm a, a bit, I, you know, and this can end up being an email ballot because I didn't put like exact language. I more wanted to discuss what the LNC would be willing. Um, I would like uh, authority uh, at a minimum to go through, I asked the credentials committee if they compiled a list of emails of the states who did submit email addresses with their delegates and they did not, but I have, I can get, I, you know, being on the credentials committee, I have the emails. I can go through, it would take a while and make a list myself, but I would like authority from the LNC to be able to send um, an email where it would be an email to me with BCC certain blocks of delegates. So I wouldn't be revealing anyone's email address. Um, I could run the text of the letter by the chair stating, you know, persons may have mistakenly thought that the items in button display cases were free, um, but about 60 of them walked away. And persons donated those to the party. Some people paid pretty pennies for some of them. I was very grateful that a rare Radical Caucus button that I had in there um, that I paid about $70 for was still in there. But this is party property that we need to try to receive and alternatively um i would ask if the lnc would consider um if the historical committee could put out an email address an email that's more talking about the work of the historical committee asking for donations to the historical committee and kind of as a footnote put in this item because i don't want an accusatory email going out saying you know oh somebody stole a bunch of stuff you know, mistakenly taken, we would like it returned on the honor system. Um, and we usually do once a term send out an informational email about LPDO where people can find all party minutes, membership reports, all kinds of things useful to the party. So I guess I'm, I'm asking for both things. I can start an email motion because it's, it's probably not properly noticed, but just a heads up, I'll, I'll start an email motion yeah. asking... You don't need an email motion. You just want to send an email out? Well, okay. Yeah, I think you can. I, I no. want to, as secretary, use the emails collected by the uh, credentials committee to send out a friendly email. But also maybe in like a month that the party send out just like an informational email asking just, for do donations. You just send okay. me the okay. language that you want copy Hannah Kennedy on it and we'll get okay. staff to put it in the activity calendar. Yeah. Okay. Easy. Done. Whatever you need for historical preservation. All right. Thank you. You are welcome. All right. Next agenda item is POTUS and VP campaign update with Reconciliation Committee, New Mexico postmortem, and potential litigation. So before we jump into any of this, how much of it um, are we going to have not in executive session? Well, Madam Chair, if I may. Yes. Um, I think the only thing, and this would be up to you, because I'm not sure um, what we're going to talk about. I think the only thing that could potentially be public is a portion of the Reconciliation Committee, and I'm not even sure about that, but I think the New Mexico postmortem needs to be an executive session, and definitely anything about potential litigation needs to be an executive session. Okay. Think about this. Oh. 
Madam Chair, I'm sorry my hand raising isn't working right now. Um, there's one thing I'd like to briefly, it's Pat Ford from Rhode Island, I'd like to briefly discuss is really just the top side members of, uh, of New Mexico. And I, I think it's important publicly that we give kudos to those folks who jumped in at the last minute uh, okay. and, uh, and saved the day, to tell you the truth. Thank you. So, thank you. So let me, who is that? I'm going to scream. Mute yourself. Maddox, stand up. Okay, yeah. Madam Sec thank you so much. For some reason, I can't, I don't have the mute function right now. Ah, all right, um, let me give a short uh, update on um, the Reconciliation Committee. Uh, we have been, and I have especially personally, been talking with affiliates that were not interested in putting the Chase Termot ticket on the ballot or had expressed a lot of frustration. One of those affiliates, we had a meeting where I brought the two together. Um, some others, uh, you know, I've, I've walked a few back from the line. I think that that's a reasonable thing for me to say personally and um, probably to be expected of me in my position. Um, and if it's not, you know, I, I took it upon myself. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, I want to give a written update, but I feel like we're not actually there yet and we're still working on all of this. So I think we should still talk about it in detail in executive session. New Mexico port post-mortem, Mr. Ford wanted to give an and, update. And Madam yes. Chair, on the Reconciliation Committee, I just wanted to make it publicly known that I'm no longer on that committee due to my adversarial as a Colorado member. Uh, situation or position, whatever it might be, with the LPCO in filing a JC appeal. And I didn't think it was appropriate for me to be on that committee any longer. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, regarding New Mexico, we are sort of saving all the good news for a big press release and everything tomorrow. But um, if uh, Mr. Ford wanted to shout out the people who went and gathered signatures, you know, go right ahead. Sure. Um, I'd like to comment in particular, and I, I don't have complete knowledge, so if I omit people, please, it's out of ignorance, not out of intention. But uh, I think it's critical to note that uh, Mr. Maligon and Mr. Redpath, at considerable time, personal time, dropped out what they were doing and headed down there and engaged in very aggressive boots on the ground. Again, here I go again, boots on the ground petitioning. Because in situations like we're in right now, we need people a little less internet conversation, a little bit more doing. And there's, for all of us around the country, there's opportunities for us to do or support or maybe even do both. So to the folks that uh, made this happen, um, my hat's off to you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, if I could remember, I mentioned to the, the folks, before I forget, a whole boatload of folks went over from Arizona over the border, took, took time over the border to go to nearby communities uh, including a member of the LNC, um, to engage in boots on the ground petitioning. So I, I omitted them, and I'm sorry, because, again, heroic efforts. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I think the next thing we need to do is go into executive session. I'm also going to recommend we stand at ease for like five minutes before we do this. Um, before I make the, the motion, do you think we can knock the whole discussion out in an hour and a half? Anybody have any thoughts on that? I uh, hope. I mean, we could just set a timer and then just not continue. <laughs> yeah, I love that idea. So what I want to do is I want to move to go in to executive session to discuss um, the POTUS and V-POTUS campaign update um, with the Reconciliation Committee. And that is a political strategy that involves some potential um, litigation, not by me, you know, but comments have been made about litigation from various parties. Um, so there's that, uh, the New Mexico post-mortem, which includes comments about um, staff and contractors. So that's why it would be an executive session and uh, potential litigation regarding a letter we got um, regarding the Chase Oliver, Mike Termott campaign and the delegates um, and how, whether or not it was properly elected. And I don't mind saying that because it circulated all over social media. Um, so for those of you who are curious and wondering, yes, we are um, 
looking into it, you know, I don't even know if I should use the term taking it seriously because I feel like that implies a whole lot of things, but um, taking it seriously from a, from a fiduciary perspective, as in I need to look into it and not be dismissive of it. Okay. Um, and then also political strategy regarding signature collections in Alabama and New Hampshire. And reassuring people that that is not about um, money. Just have some some questions about um, how I thought that... I handled that. Oh yeah, you did. But we're gonna we're gonna talk about the how signature gathering is is um, done. Um, how we want to keep track of it, uh, establishing standards that that kind of stuff. But that's not that's not financial. Does that make sense, Crystal? All right. Um, Madam Chair, I did not upload, as I had stated publicly on the list a few weeks ago, which may have gotten lost in the mosh, but um, I did not, I didn't pre-set up breakout rooms because last time when I was listening to the recording in order to upload, there were inappropriate discussions had when we yep. were in the other room in which party members were being talking ill of whether it's friends of mine or foes of mine, it doesn't matter. So I, I just think without staff or some kind of moderator, it's, it's, it's irresponsible. So um, we're not going to have any motions. We've done all of the noticed motions. So I would suggest when we go into executive session that it's the end of the public part of the meeting. And yeah, that's, that's that's fine um you know you abuse it you lose it uh it's totally fine oh look on that note it's a great time okay so um here's my motion does it have a second all second fantastic um any objection going once going twice here and none all right we're gonna go into executive session where um Hopefully it's just for an hour and a half. Uh, I don't think that any of these items are mo noticed with motion. So I don't think there's going to be a vote afterwards and anyone will miss. And then we're going to also stand at ease for five minutes first. And that's so this it. will give everyone an opportunity to vamoose. I do have a question. Um, we are not doing public comment right now, but if you drop your question in the chat, I could probably answer it there. All right, we're at ease for five minutes. People don't have to drop off, um, you know, right away. But um, LNC members, and this is only going to be LNC members in executive session. Um, Come back at 5.15. Will you be coming back from executive session? Uh, Mr. Jacobs, I think I can answer that. There's no motion, so when we come back, it'll be just to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Um, Lori, I'll answer your question during the standardies portion. There is no results of executive session. Motions have to be noticed ahead of time, and there were no motions noticed. If any motions come out of this executive session, they will be done on an email list or at a future meeting. We will come out of executive session just to adjourn. Mr. Mitchell, we will have to ask the chair when she comes back, and it will be on the public recording, if she wishes to supplement her motion um, to allow your attendance as assistant treasurer is not an official LNC position. So um, when she gets back, if you're wishing to attend executive session, she's going to need to amend the motion. Hello, hello. Um, I heard the question.
question about Patrick Mitchell. Yes, um, I should have mentioned I do want our assistant treasurer in because I think he's going to be able to help us with financial questions. So Chair McCardle moved to amend the motion previously adopted to include the assistant treasurer, Mr. Mitchell. Um, <coughs> second. Second. Thank you. Any objections? Going once, going twice, going with the understanding I will roast you alive on a spit. You violate executive session. Um, hearing no objections, that's, that motion passes. Okay, now yeah. I'm stopping the recording. All right, thank you.